Good morning. And the church to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's so worthy to be praised, isn't he? What a wonderful way to celebrate Pastor Chris's birthday with a breakout Sunday, wasn't it? God moves, and when the Spirit is ready, the Spirit is ready. We just have to open ourselves up to receive. Amen? Amen. So if you're visiting with us for the first time, welcome. We're so glad that you have chosen to worship with us today. We typically teach before we give. It's called Kingdom Wealth Manager because you are the Kingdom Wealth Manager. Somebody shout, I am a Kingdom Wealth Manager. A Kingdom Wealth Manager. Man, Prophetess Faith, her, her, her face is just like glowing and, and just like taking up whole space, Faith. Minister Faith, Prophetess Faith. I, it's just like, as soon as I said Kingdom Wealth Manager, I want to pause for a minute because I was sharing with Alicia, it's your faith that goes before you. Pastor Chris could have chosen anyone in the congregation today, but it was something about her faith, amen, that attracted her, that pulled her up here for him to use her as an example for every single person in this room. Anybody got a dream? Anybody got a vision? Anybody expecting God to do marvelous things? Yes. Amen. That's what a Kingdom Wealth Manager does. So today is Tag Team Sunday. Amen. So not only are we teaching the next message together, we're going to teach the Kingdom Wealth Manager message. And you're just literally getting a glimpse of what happens in our lives every day at home. And Corey can attest to this. This is how we flow at home. So a Kingdom Wealth Manager is simply someone that's going to go after it. Say, I will. I will. Go after it. Go after it. Say it again. I will. I will. Go after it. Go after it. Now say it one more time that the Lord can hear you and the devil can go on the run. Say, I will. I will. Go after it. Go after it. Amen. What does that mean for you? This year, we're making a decision to go after it. Go after becoming the next best Kingdom Wealth Manager. Go after the dreams. Go after the desires. Go after the vision. Go after being free. Go after being established in God. Go after having a kingdom mindset. Shout, I'm going to go after it. I'm going to go after it. You know, there's just some freedom that needs to happen with the people of God, yes, right? Yes. We need to be free enough to worship, free enough to give to God, and free to be kingdom wealth managers. And see, what finances can do, it's bondage. Yeah. Like when you don't have the money you need to live, it can be a distraction. I'm going to just wait because y'all acting like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. When money is tight, a lot's tight in the house. Yeah. But when it's payday and you got money to spend, you feel different. Or money to sow. Or money to sow. Right. You feel different. I can't tell you how many times we've been in a situation where we were like, okay, it's only going to take God. Anybody been in that situation? Like, it's only going to take the grace if of God. God doesn't do it. But when we see him do it, I mean, we can't wait to sow into the Amen. kingdom of God because that's the principle that we follow. That when you sow, yes. you can expect a harvest. Somebody shout harvest. Harvest. It's a kingdom principle. The word reminds us in Genesis that there will be seed time and uh, harvest. harvest. So as long as you got a seed seed, as long as there is time still in existence, you can expect a harvest from God. And the last time I checked, can't nobody do it like him. Come on. Can't nobody else do me like Jesus. So simply here, you've seen this for the last two months. Go after it. These are our foundational scriptures. You read a run to win. Shout, I'm ready to run. I'm ready to run. And I'm ready to win. And I'm ready to win. Read the scriptures. Study the scriptures. Meditate the scriptures. Take scripture. a picture of this and go home. Take one each day and read it. I'm telling you, it's not deep. But this word has to get past your head and into your heart. Because up here, you're like, okay, that makes sense. But when it gets in here, there's a belief. Yes. There's a confidence. The second one we talked about was grab, throw, and go. Mm -hmm. Grab what you believe in God for, right? Then also need to grab this mess, these thoughts, these ideas, these can'ts, C-A-N-T, can'ts. Right. And throw those down. Right. And go on and do what God wants you to do. Exactly. And the third one is stay focused. Somebody shout, I need to stay focused. Stay focused. Ooh, distraction can come in so many ways. Yes. But we just need to stay focused on what? God's promises. And God's promises can be found in his word. So we're talking about success. Kingdom Wealth Managers are successful. Pastor Chris just said it a minute ago, we're not moved by what we feel. We're not moved by what we see. We're moved by what we believe, and we believe the Word of God. Amen? Amen. So success simply means being the person that God created you to be. Yes. That's all it is, right? There are measurements that get you along the way, so, but success is really being who God has already authentically created designed you to be. Amen? Amen. We put this vision up here, this picture we were kind of talking about on the next slide. And, you know, a lot of people see success at the top. But often they don't see all the things that you've been through to get you to that level. 
Come on. Okay. If you don't have these things at the bottom, just live a little bit longer. They'll happen. They will happen. But the great thing is that we have victory. Shout, I got victory. I got victory. The word reminds us that you overcome by your very own testimony. So you got to have a testimony. You can have a testimony with your kingdom wealth manager selves. Come on. Right? You can come and share how good God has been to you and through you in your finances when you sow into the kingdom. Well, so you look at a couple of things up there. I see late nights. Anybody had late nights before? Come on. Right? Discipline is happening underneath. Doubts are happening. Struggle, failures, actions, disappointments. All of that's going on. And what you have to realize is you can walk this out by faith. Amen. So if you don't have the testimony yet, practice one. We have practice testimonies. While things were not looking good, and then I'm going to say, and then I'm going to use, and then I'm going to say this part, and then I'm going to say, and then I'm going to wear that outfit because then I... Because I'm planning for my victory. Yes. You can plan a victory. Have anybody seen people do elections? Mm -hmm. Two people running for the same office in the city. Both of them have a celebration party set up, do they not? Yeah. There are two ballrooms with different color balloons, and they're waiting for the results to come in. So my point is, if they can do that knowing they don't know the outcome, but let me tell you, you know the outcome. Yes. See, blow your balloons up and set your room up and go, God is going to come through sooner than later. Amen. Amen. So I'm practicing what I'm going to say when he shows up. I'm practicing how I'm going to give. I'm practicing what I'm going to do. But you can start doing that before it happens because you're people of faith. Yeah, that's who we are. We're faith people. You saw that as a kingdom wealth manager. So success belongs to who? Say it. Don't just look at me and shake that hand. Say success belongs to me. He was just talking about your confession, right? Your confession is the word that's coming out of your mouth based on the word of God. So we have to confess that. I'll give you, we'll just share a little, a little confession with you in our household. We confess that we have million dollar businesses, yeah. okay? Not only do we confess we have million dollar businesses, we say we sow million dollar seeds, all right? So if I'm sowing a million dollar time, that means that I have more than enough. Somebody shout more than enough. More than enough. See, my confession is working for me. Yeah. We're seeing it happen in our businesses that the gift that God has given us is now making room for us. Come on. But it requires us to confess the right thing. It con- requires us to know what God says about us. And it also requires us to sow seed. Amen? And, so and when we sow, go ahead. I was just going to say, and that's why we sow seed even before we see the outcome. Amen. A farmer does that all the time. We, I told you this a couple weeks ago. A gardener doesn't plant and then there's a tomato. They plant a seed. Right. But then they wait and watch and water it to grow up to become the tomato. Yes. So when we ask you to give, we're not saying give to us. You're giving to God in advance. You're like, I already know you're going to come through. And let me pause right there. What a joy it is to give to God. Oh, come on. I mean, just think about it. We get to give to the Father that created you. We get to be a part of building the kingdom of God, right? You heard me say last week, it's not about about acquiring wealth. It's about advancing the kingdom Kingdom of of God. God. Anybody want to be a part of advancing the kingdom? I know I do. I said, well, Lord, I want to see what my seed has done. Now, here's the thing. The seed didn't come from you. The seed came from him. So it's this cycle that just goes into momentum as God provides you with seed. You have a decision to make with the seed, which is to sow. Shout, I'm going to sow. I'm going to sow. Right? And then this motion comes into place. You water it. You use your faith. And then the harvest and the blessing comes back to you and others around you. That's a good place to be in. Amen? What are you going to say? I'm I'm, I'm doing my little side talk here. Side talk. Okay. So, so we were in a situation where Pastor Joy had now, we'd had Corey, she had been home, um, staying home with the children for probably five years at that point. And that was hard. And it was hard for her. Mm-hmm. It was hard on our pocketbook. She had a big check. <laughs> Y'all don't want to be real. Y'all she had a big check. She was cute. Now, I married her because she was cute, but she came with her own money, too. I did. That was good. It was even good. good. But... So we had gotten this, we had moved well, into this new house. One can put a thousand to flight. One, two, two can put, put a ten, ten thousand Amen. to flight. Amen. Get you a two. Get right, you a that's two. All Here, that's, all. that's for the marriage ministry. Oh, okay. don't talk about the marriage ministry. Okay. okay, but here's what happened. We had moved into this dream house, big old house. We were doing renovations. And then we had come to a spot where the money was acting funny. <laughs> now, I don't know about your account, but you got in your account. If you looked at your account, you go, <laughs> whoa, okay. <laughs> all right, that's how we doing it. Okay. So we had been tithing and giving. Big old, the house was 10,000 square feet. We had an indoor pool. 
it was big property, but we were doing some renovation. And so Joy and I talked, and I don't remember exactly how we got to this. And she might be watching online. You still need to give us a testimony. But we called We were actually lady. on vacation. That's what it was. We were on That's vacation. Right. And I was in my prayer. Anybody love to pray on vacation? I, I was like, oh, Lord, Father, we just thank you and praise you. You know, you're looking out at the beautiful ocean and all of his magnificent creation. And on that time, lo and behold, the Lord decides to speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Right? Yes. And what does he say? He said... Bring this young lady to your house and let her go pick what she wants. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what, when she came and told me that, I was like, stop drinking them daiquiris. We don't do that on vacation. Stop that. I said, what? She said, I think we're supposed to bless her. And then after you said that, so when we got home, we took... Um, a he said specifically to give her, and I know it, right? Yep. This is how you know when it's like, this was deep, right? He said, give her these orange sticky notes. And I have a sticky note ministry. If you know me, you know I have a sticky note Everybody ministry. Everybody know what a sticky note is, right? All right. right. All right. I'll post it. I'll post it. Y'all know what I'm talking about? He said, give her the stack. And Not everything one. she puts around the house belongs she could have. to her. So, so, we, so we met her at the lobby, the, I mean, well, the foyer of our house. We're standing there, and she was like, what's going on? Here? And we're like, well, this is what God told her. And she was like, oh, my God. What? And she and immediately started looking. What? God said what? And I was like, you, and you know, my flesh was like in the lobby. You can take these right here. Don't go past this. And she, and now this, we're just trying to be real with you all. So we were standing there and, and she, all of a sudden she was like, oh my gosh. So she started not running, but walking very fast around the house. She was excited. And we could hear the, whoosh, whoosh. And I couldn't see her, but I could hear. And I was like, she putting sticky on something. And so she was going around the house now, and now, and, and we have this thing called obtaining faith and sustaining faith, which means I'm typically the one that goes out and does the reckless faith. Let's just do it. Ah! And then after we do that, she's like the sustaining faith. Okay, God, how are we going to keep this? How are we going to keep this flowing? So we hear the young lady going around the house, and I know she's putting it on the good stuff. My favorite I, look, wait, stuff, too. Because I opened the basement door where the old furniture was. I said, you know, don't feel free to go in the basement. She did this. Closed the door. Went past the basement. I was like, the <laughs> devil is a liar. But she started putting sticky notes and stuff. And then we started kind of walking around the house. And she was like, I love these chairs. I love this table. I was like, hmm. And y'all remember the old school big screen TVs? Not the new ones. Next thing I know, she could, she's pushing my TV. I'm talking the big and I was like, look, look at here, look at here, look at here. Now, wait, now, Jesus. But this one said, I got to go. She was like, I got I to gotta go. She was like, I, I'm going to go to, I got to. Because it was hard on our flesh because she was picking all of our good stuff. I'm not, I'm, and you know, I mean, we were like, take what you want. She took what she wanted. And after minutes, you know, then we were like, where are we going to sit? Where are we going to sleep? Right? We like, look, and she didn't even have kids. We were like, you don't even need all that furniture. You ain't got nobody but one. You got, I'm just telling you. But then we kept reminding each other of this. Give. Give, and it, and shall, it shall be, be given, given to back you. to you. Good measure. Press, press down, down. Shaken together and running over. We also learned that a seed will meet any need, yes. right? And a sacrificial seed will do damage. Yes. I mean, when you start sowing a sacrificial seed into the kingdom. And so by the time she was done, she couldn't even take it all. She was like, I'm going to call for a truck. I was like, Amen. But in the next few weeks and months, money started coming in. We started paying. We, we had invested personally in a subdivision. It was only three owners. We were, it was like an early thing, and it was going to be this great big move for us. We wound up losing. She won't let me tell the number. It was a very big number. So we were like, wow, okay. So then in our time of need, we were like, I can't eat my seed right now. This seed started producing ways for us to get the money back. Amen. All of a sudden, things started happening with major people who were like, you owe us this, but all of a sudden, the records have shown you only owe this. And I was like, and I was being honest. I know, bro, I know I owe you. And he was like, well, we don't see it. And I was like, well, then I'm not paying it. <laughs> but out of that, we wind up getting completely out of debt and moving and then you know what's so funny? Then we were able to go get the furniture we wanted in this season in our life. Yeah, yeah. God is faithful in that way. So we, like, literally, debt was supernaturally canceled. That next year, we got completely out of debt. 
So we talk about that value of time. Do not underestimate the value of time. Somebody say, I got seed. I got seed. I'm going to let God move in the time. Yes. And I'm going to expect the harvest. Yes. Now I'm receiving the harvest. Amen. Yep, that's it right there. When you're like, now I receive it, Father. Right? I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Did you get anything out of the Kingdom Wealth Manager message? Amen. Amen. So Amen. as you're giving this morning, it may feel a little like, oh, this feels weird. I mean, this is the money God's I need. God's going to speak to you. He's going to talk to but you. But you just never know. I mean, like that thing changed this young woman's whole life. Whole life. Right? The seed that you have literally has the power to change somebody's life. Right. They could be sitting right next to you and you don't yep. even know. Amen? We get excited when it's time to give. So we're going to give you a minute. You can give by text. You can give online. You can give at the back of the church and the in the foyer as well after church. But we're going to come back and pray a covenant blessing over your seed after you've sown it. Amen? Amen. So take Amen. your phones out, write your checks. We'll give you 30 seconds or so, and then we'll pray. Can you guys put the text screen up, please? Number on the screen, please.